Hi everyone, this is Ron from pocculture.com. I'm here with Maureen Barucha, who is the director of Golden Arm and an upcoming episode of Saved by the Bell on Peacock. Maureen, how are you? Good, how are you, Ron? Great, thank you so much for taking the time. I loved your episode. It was um, one of my favorite episodes of both series, the original and new, which I, which I love so much. Um, could you talk a little bit about the NBCU um, Female Forward program and your experience with it so far? Yeah, I mean, it has been a life-changing experience. Um, I come from features and directed on Jimmy Kimmel Live for quite a while. And, you know, it's just having a little bit of a tough time breaking into the episodic world. But through the NBC Universal Female Forward program, um, that happened. And it kind of, you know, I was in the program during the pandemic. So it was actually kind of the thing that got me through. It was getting to hear all the speakers and meeting all the executives and just kind of talking to my other fellow um, NBC uh, Universal uh, people in the program. It really, it really made a, a huge impact on me. That's great. And what would you say is um, maybe, is there somebody you worked with that was particularly just like a revelation for you or really helpful that you appreciate it? Uh, well, see the program, what's so great is I actually got to shadow on Superstore uh, before I was on Say by the Bell. So I got to shadow uh, Victor Nelly, which was so great. Um, and, you know, Betsy Thomas, like they were basically showed me the ropes and it was just amazing to kind of see them work and get getting to shadow before my episode of Save by the Bell was just so incredible. So I got I got to learn a lot of little tricks and trade tricks of the trade from them. That's excellent. I love Superstore. Um, so it's probably a, a, per, a perfect training ground for you. I've heard you talk about how you got into um, directing and such in college. And before I know you had a various artistic background, what was it? Um, was there a moment or an inspiration that made you decide this is what I want to do? Yeah, it's so funny. I, I think I grew up or I grew up wanting to always be an actor or perform and I was always putting on Christmas pageants and plays and have a ton of cousins. And I took theater all through high school and college um, and photography and art. My mom's an artist, but the year was 1999 and I took a film class in college and in the film class for the first time I saw Taxi Driver and Citizen Kane and 400 Blows. And in the theater that year was Fight Club and The Matrix and being John Malkovich. And that was the year that I was like, wait a second, movies, that's what I want to do. So I, that was just the year that kind of like my head exploded. And I was like, you could do this. I could do this. Um, so that was, I think when I look back on it, that was like the moment. That's amazing. 1999 was such a good year of film. There were so many amazing films that came out um, and I looked through that. And so as you talk about these films, I, I remember just being um, so excited about all those films that you named. Um, so I'd love to hear that inspiration. Let's talk about Saved by the Bell. Um, yeah. I've really enjoyed just the, the reboot of the series. I, I was a huge fan of the original. Me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a dream it must be for you to play in this sandbox. Um, your story, your, your episode um, coming up is a perfect balance of like this very poignant storyline of culture, identity, language, but then has that trademark humor infused. Um, how did just this, that specific storyline um, about the Spanish class come about? Um, and what did you want to uh, communicate through it? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I'm like you, I was, I was a huge Saved by the Bell fan, watched it every Saturday morning, watched through the college years. I think I dipped out at the new class. Um, but so I was already a huge fan. And then when, you know, when the first season, the reimagining came out, I was, I was like, I'm watching the show and I loved it. I mean, what Tracy Wigfield has kind of done with reimagining the show in such a smart way that kind of, you know, it infuses comedy, but then also makes us kind of like look at ourselves in our past it has been such an interesting thing. So with this episode with the Spanish class, I think it's it kind of is the same kind of along those lines where you kind of take something that is an issue, but it's wrapped in a, in a comedy and it's so funny, but it's getting to kind of explore what happens in our society from a perspective that maybe you've never seen. So, you know, it was a lot, it was a lot of talking with the writers, Victoria Gonzalez and Marcos Gonzalez who wrote the episode. Um, and then with Haskiri and Alicia in particular, just kind of listening to their stories about this experience that has happened to all of them in Spanish classes when they were in school. One, it was, it's so, I'm so honored that I got to be a part of it. And then two, it kind of was like, it kind of made me feel sad that I never kind of heard this story from before. So the fact that it's been going on and everybody has this experience and the, and the fact that we can explore it in on a show like Say by the Bell and kind of bring it to the masses, I think is, is so important. 
That's so great. And I think your talking about um, Alicia and, and Haskiri and their experiences really comes through because that storyline is super authentic, right? It's emotional and, and really um, comes through. What, when you were working with those two uh, actresses in particular, um, what did they kind of infuse into the storyline that you felt you know, really added to the authenticity? I mean, one, they, they both said they had the same experience as far as like, and, and that's something that I related to as well about identity and your cultural identity is who you are. But sometimes when an outside force is telling you that your culture, you're not doing your culture right or you're not speaking your language right, you know, I have a lot of stuff with like food in my family where it's like, I don't know all the names of all the Indian dishes, but it's like, that's just the food my grandmother made. I don't know the specific thing. So I, we did a lot of conversations about that, about talking about our cultural identity and how we, how we feel about it and how prideful we are, but then how sometimes you grow up and those, there are those experiences where somebody else other kind of comes and tells you you're wrong. And that's kind of what this episode explores. And it was really, it was really just having a lot of conversations like that and figuring out wow, like I can relate in a different way, but the specificity of what's happening in this episode had happened to both of them in particular. I feel like a story like this in a show like Saved by the Bell, which is everybody watches it, right? Everybody has watched it if they're around our age and, then, um, and beyond. It, it, it's so impactful for this type of message. Um, what do you hope that uh, kids and you know young viewers of all backgrounds take away from from seeing that experience and that storyline i think to me whenever you know whenever whenever something can tickle your brain and your funny bone at the same time it's it's really doing its job so one i think i hope people just enjoy the episode and have fun with it i also hope that people just it takes a moment to open your mind and maybe listen and see that like people are going through other experiences that you're not a part of but that doesn't mean that you can't be an ally or support and like really because again I'm not a part of the Latino community but I was like you know what that means that I can still show up and support and be an ally when needed so I think I I hope that all stories kind of do that they open your mind to other people's experiences and that you can you can help and support when you can absolutely and I and I think that's like so important um another important character in that storyline is our beloved Mario Lopez AC Slater and I thought I, that part really got me because I don't know that I've ever seen um, AC Slater in that light. And he talks so vulnerably about, look, I, I don't think um, I even learned how to speak Spanish until the college years. That's like the perfect um, humor. <laughs> oh my God, I laughed so hard when I read that in the script. <laughs> that was like, I laughed out loud when I was reading that. Yeah, funniest line. Too. And I love that it wasn't just glossed over. It's like, um, she says, you mean college? <laughs> he says, yeah, the college years. <laughs> um, and so I love that reference and infusing that humor, uh, but what you did with, and the writers did with, with his character. Um, what was Mario's input? We've talked about, you know, Alicia and, and his career. What was his own um, experience and input uh, into his character development there? I mean, what's so incredible about the show is that, you know, he grew up being Slater and the fact that he can come back and be on this show and kind of explore all that past in a new way with the new light. I think that is what is also the brilliance of this show. It's it's what we all are kind of doing right now. We're having a reckoning of our past where you can still love the old said by the bell, like I still do, but you can also hold truth that like maybe some of the things that we said or taught ourselves or believed in the past, maybe we're wrong. Or, you know, I, I think it, what's so great too about Mario and Alicia having that scene is it becomes a generational conversation. You know, that conversation specifically was happening within the Latino committee, but a uh, community. But like, I think I thought of it from like my dad, like my dad is, you know, born and raised in Burma and Indian. And I'm like, oh man, sometimes not, he loves his, he, you know, he's, he's definitely proud of his heritage, but you know, he definitely did a lot of stuff to assimilate. And so, you know, that's a conversation, a general conversation that like we can have where he might have a different perspective because it was just different for him when he was coming in in that generation. So I think it's so, it's so incredible that you can have this episode with two Latinas at the lead and then also have a generational conversation within that as well. I completely agree. And I mean, which immigrant family hasn't dealt with that conflict of wanting to assimilate? My parents totally have done that and wanted me to assimilate. So yeah. that really resonated with me. Um, and I think it, it just blew my mind that it sets up um, the character of AC Slater for like another new phase as the Spanish teacher, which I love, love. So I can't wait to see more. Um, you know, for you personally, two more questions. Um, yeah. you, you're a, a, a woman director of 
diverse background, it could it can have been easy um, to make it in this industry. Um, you know, what is your motivation to like keep going and like bang down those doors and make it? Yeah, I mean, one thing that it's like, I feel like I painted myself into a corner. <laughs> I mean, I went to, you know, I did film studies undergrad and then I got my master's in film production and then just started this. So I'm like, I have no other skill sets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do think I started at a time when well, I'm so grateful that the conversation's happening that it has been for harder for women. But I think when I started, that wasn't apparent. You know, I didn't think that it was going to be harder for me than anybody else. You know, I, through my through my journey, I've found that that's not necessarily the case. But I think it's just, you know, strong will and like I won't give up. And I, you know, I set a goal and I will just fight tooth and nail to get get to that goal and you know pursue my dream. So that's just like inherently me um, is that no matter what form it takes, whether it's movies or TV or just even a fun short, I always want to be creating and telling stories. So I know I'll continue to do that no matter what. Well, I love that. And, and we all need it and we're inspired by your work. So thank you for that. And last question is, what's your favorite Sprinkles cupcake? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I feel like the one on the menu, like we used to make some, you know, we used to make our own in the back. <laughs> Maybe on the menu would be like the carrot, but um. I used to do a chocolate cupcake, a dark chocolate cupcake with peanut butter frosting. So that's like when we were, we were in the back, we would do experimentations. That's like my own concoction. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Maybe they'll uh, put it on the menu someday and we can all try it. Yeah. Well, Maureen, thank you so much. Uh, again, I really loved your episode and enjoyed our conversation and looking forward to uh, more of your work. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too.